Hi kids, this is Mr. Bickford bringing you chapter one, lesson five. Uh, it's called graph ratio tables. So we're extending our learning from ratio tables into graphing those tables. Uh, you will need a Cornell note page or your comp book. Uh, whenever you see these lines and the Cornell note format, you know that you are following along in, in your, either on your note page or in your comp book. Okay, let's get started. Uh, one thing I've noticed is that not every kid is writing down the heading and what lesson it is. Make sure you're putting the topic up here and what, what it is so you know what order your notes go in. Chapter one, lesson five, graph ratio tables. And we're gonna start by looking at these two different uh, ratios. Chris earns $8 per hour and Alana earns $15 per hour. Up till now, most of our ratio tables have looked like this. You don't have to write this down. I'm just showing that they've gone this way. Okay, if Chris earns $8 per hour, I could count by hours. After one hour, he's made $8, two hours, $16, three hours, 24, and I could just extend that table. Keeps counting. Uh, today, the tables get turned up and down and we are going to add another column. So I'll show you what that looks like. So for Chris, we are going to put hour and then we're going to put the money he makes per hour. And again, it's going up and down. And the, what we are going to add is a column called ordered pairs. And the hour column, we are, that is going to be the X value. And the dollar column is going to be the Y value. Same thing for Alana. We're going to make the exact same table. So hour. how much money she makes, and ordered pairs. Again, hour is going to be our x value and our x coordinate. The money is going to be our y value and the y coordinate. So now let's, let's fill in our tables. Well, after one hour, how much money has Chris made? $8. After two hours, 16 3 24 and then 4 After four hours, he's made $32. Extend my table. Uh, these values, the X and the Y, the hours and the money, form our ordered pairs. So my ordered pairs look like that. 1, 8, 2, 16, 3, 24, and 4, 32. Alana earns $15 per hour. And let's figure out how much she has made. After one hour, she's made $15. After two hours, she's made $30. After three hours, 45. After four hours, uh, she's made 60. And then her ordered pairs, again, I knew that's the X value, this is the Y value, and it's 1, 15, 2, 30, 3, 45, and 4, 60. This is what we've seen and what we're adding to in today's lesson is we're creating from our X and Y values in our ratio, we're creating ordered pairs. Uh, next, we're going to graph uh, Chris, how much Chris makes and how much Alana makes. And I'm gonna use a couple different colors on my coordinate plane. Uh, I'm 
gonna just highlight Chris's info in one color. Okay, so I know that he, Chris, uh, has the pink data. Alana, her values, we're gonna highlight a different color. So we're gonna graph both sets of data on one coordinate plane. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do next. And over here, I'm gonna write coordinate plane. That's one of our key vocabulary words today. We've got a few key vocabulary words. Coordinate plane is one. Uh, the origin is another key vocabulary word. And we will highlight some other key vocabulary words as we create our coordinate plane. My coordinate plane, I'm going to use a ruler and Are you ready, kids? Uh oh. Yeah. Where's my phone? It's my friend Spongebob phone. Hello? What's up, Bob? Oh, today's hidden treasure. Uh, I guess I could do that. Um, okay. I will, that's a good idea. Uh, I will use that for the hidden treasure today. Okay, thanks a lot. See you later. All right, SpongeBob had a great idea for our treasure. Uh, you might have to fast forward this. It's gonna take me a little bit. I will be right back. I'm back. SpongeBob wanted you to meet somebody, and the hidden treasure today is you have to know that this is Ziggy. Hi, Zig. Can you say hi? Okay, so you have to describe Ziggy and know who he is in order to win today's treasure. Okay? All right, let's continue. Hopefully you fast forwarded through all that. Sorry that took me a while to find Ziggy. Okay, coordinate plane. Let me tilt the camera a little bit. Okay, so when you are graphing, this is the y-axis. This is your x-axis. And I'm putting arrows on the end of the both axes because they keep going forever. And one thing uh, I want to note when you're creating a graph, 
the jumps on the x-axis and the jumps on the y-axis, they have to be, all the jumps on the y-axis have to be the same, all the jumps on the x-axis have to be the same, okay? They don't have to match each other, but on each axis they have to be the same. Here's what I mean. So I'm going to look at my values up here, and for my x values, I see that it's only counting by, by ones each time. So on my x-axis, this would be 0. I'm going to make even jumps, but I'm going to call these 1. Each jump is counting by 1. So that's my x-axis. My y-axis, I notice my values uh, go all the way to 60. I don't want to count by 1s because that would be way too big. Instead, I'm going to count by 10s. So I'm going to call that 10. And I'm going to call that 20. But again, these jumps are exactly the same. 40, uh-oh, 50, and 60. So these jumps are identical on the y-axis. These jumps are identical on the x-axis. Uh, the origin is a special spot called 0, 0. So the origin is this point right here. This whole thing is... This whole thing is called a coordinate plane. This point is the origin. Now I'm going to start graphing my ordered pairs. And the reason why I did different colors is we're graphing Chris's data and Alana's data on the same coordinate plane. Uh, so the first point for Chris is 1, 8. Now when you're graphing coordinates, it is always x first and y second. Okay, always, always. So the first point I'm going to graph for Chris is one hour. He earns eight dollars. So here's one. This line is ten, so I'm going to go a little bit below ten. About right there. I have to estimate. Uh, the next point is two hours. He makes sixteen. Here's two. Right in the middle of ten and twenty would be fifteen. So I'm going to go a tiny, just barely above halfway. After three hours, he's made $24. So here's three hours. I go up to 24. Right in the middle is 25. I'm going right below that. After four hours, Chris has made $32. So here's four. I'm going to go up and across. That's 30 so just a little bit above 30, maybe about right there, okay? I didn't put this on the table, but I could have. If Chris works zero hours, how much money has he made? Zero. So there's really a point on the origin for Chris as well. And I look at the, da the data after I get on the graph, and I notice that it's making a straight line. I could connect the dots and I'd have a straight line. All right, now let's get Alana's, let's graph Alana's, how much she earns on our coordinate plane. So again, if Alana, it's not on here, but if she worked zero hours, she would have zero money. So she also has a point right there at the origin, just like Chris does. After one hour of work, she makes $15. So here's one. I'm going to go up to 15. After two hours, $30. After three hours, so again, x comma y, I'm going over to three, x value first, up to 45. Let's see, so 45 is right there, right in between 40 and 50. And uh, after four hours, Alana has made $60. I'm going to go over four, up 60. And now I step back and look at Alana's data and Chris's data. Here's Chris's data. 
does make a straight line. Here's Alana's data. Her, her data makes a straight line as well. Again, this right here, that point is called an ordered pair. Uh, this point for Chris, the ordered pair for that point is 4, comma, 32. I could label all of these coordinates with uh, my x coordinate and y coordinate. Together, this thing is called an ordered pair. And it's the x coordinate and the y-coordinate. That's always your pattern, is the x-coordinate comes first, the y-coordinate comes second. Uh, all right, today you are going to be practicing uh, graphing, uh, graphing ratio tables, uh, creating ordered pairs from your values in your ratio table, and talking about patterns that you notice after you graph. That's all for today. Uh, see you next time. Bye.